What's going on? Move the mouse here back in City Skylines, the town of Grand Lakes. I started messing around with stuff offline. I, I know people don't like when I do it, but uh, I've had four different crashes today. Um, and it has made recording and building absolutely miserable and it keeps interrupting my, my progress. So I've been like quick building stuff and saving and I wanted to put a little area up here just to commit to uh, university sports. So what I did with that, and I'm, this is not staying this way necessarily, but I thought it would be cool to build it into the campus and, and kind of bury it in the back. So the only way to get to the sports arenas is through the campus. And this actually generates a good amount of traffic on game days, but I'm using this one-way loop to bring traffic around the university quad, right? So up here, it transitions... That's not supposed to be two-way street. Um, hang on a second. Alright, so now that that's fixed, here it transitions from a two-way, one-way street into a two-way, one-way street, or a one-way on-ramp, which becomes two lanes, and then dumps out to this roundabout. I've got some very basic roads so far, and I, I dumped two of the sports arenas here. So we're going to kind of place them, and then get fancy with the roads and, and how we kind of hook all that together. Um, ultimately, the, again, there is a lot of traffic that comes through here, but I thought it was kind of a creative way to do it. I don't know. It, it's all part of the campus, right? But the tricky part is without move it, you can't get these footpaths too, too close to the, the road down below. And especially this one, which the way I had this built was above a, a road that was already raised up just a little bit. So I want to come back and fix those. Maybe we'll tunnel under and, and hide all of this. Maybe that makes more sense. That that could be cool. Rather than have this bridge over there do the same thing, but underwater, and then just have it kind of dump out on the other side there. Maybe we could have some uh, some pedestrian paths or something else coming through here. So anyways, that that's something that I'm, I'm messing around with the idea of. I don't know if we're going to do sports on the other island. I think that we should. But we also got to keep an eye on our budget. Uh, you may notice a bunch of people have moved out, so I... All those neighborhoods that I kind of crammed in here, I've been slowly deleting them bit by bit to build up more of the town that I had an actual vision for. So if you were upset that, you know, again, you kind of missed some stuff offline when I crammed this island full of people for hitting that 55,000 milestone. Now we're... Ugh. Now we are... Um, now we're trying to fine-tune and, and now that we've unlocked everything... Um, you know, kind of kind of put things in their final spots. Uh, one thing you'll notice that is missing from the skyline, and I, I do kind of like that skyline over there. it would be nice once it's a little bit more rounded out in the background. Uh, but one thing you'll notice is missing is the space elevator. It's fantastic for... It was right here. It's fantastic for bringing tourists into the town. It's, it makes a good deal of money. And if you put it right next to your airport or carefully next to mass uh, transit, you won't generate a lot of traffic. Just money and actually if you put it next to the airport people walk there spend money in the city and then walk back out um so it's great for bringing in tourists but it i'd hate i hate it in the skyline because it's got that that needle that just goes up to infinity and uh and i got rid of it i got rid of it purely for aesthetic purposes because when we we're you know over here in fact let's look from the you know the university campus right actually I take it back let's Let's really see what our town kind of looks like off in the distance, because that is part of the test. Maybe we could see from the top of the footbridge. I guess I could have got a little closer before before I threw myself into this mode. Oh, there's a tree right through the footpath. We'll have to fix that. So you just see it just barely tucking through the trees over there. It's kind of cool. Kind of cool off in the distance. Um, you know, it's just tall enough that it gets over, over the skyline of the buildings in the immediate vicinity. Um, bunch of repeats right here. We're gonna have to get rid of those. But hopefully you're getting a feel for, for kind of how it will all eventually snap together. I think what I'm gonna work on today is going to be kind of this quadrant of the island. And I want to break up my district tool. 
I want to do a couple things here. I want to tighten this up a bit because there's a lot of stuff going on over here. We'll go with the uh, the smallest brush. Let's do this for now. Let's actually on pause. We're going to delete this um, this part of the district, and I want basically the the nightclubs and leisure to only be here, right? To only be here in Umber Heights or whatever we end up calling it. But I think that could be pretty cool. If we just had, you know, this this little area of the town, it's a little bit different focused. We do have a bunch of different arcades that are cropping up. So at some point, what I'll try and do is come in here with. So we've got a gym there. I don't really care about that. I like the arcade. Let's have the arcade stay here. So hopefully, the, the only thing that, we're, that that causes this not to work is if we have abandonment. And we have had a lot of abandonment. But I'm going to keep those demand sliders kind of from, from going completely empty, which should reduce the risk of some of that abandonment. So when we come to a building that we like, as long as it doesn't get abandoned, we can say historical and make it so that if it hasn't leveled all the way up, which it looks like specialized industry buildings are always the highest level. Okay, so these won't change on us. But just in case, if we're dealing with leveled buildings, we can make them historical so that they don't change their appearance. We could also, uh, it also provides a little bit of extra buffer to confirm the demolition rather than just simply allowing me to demo it like that. So if we see little businesses that we like, that we want to keep, we can mark them with that historical to make sure if they weren't specialized. I like that diner. Um, let's make sure we don't bulldoze that. What is this? Sing along karaoke, absolutely. I'm not going to mark any of the gyms, not the uh, the fitness guru in the family. That would be Apple Buddy, my wife. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let those gyms potentially go away. Do we have a second diner? I marked that diner as historical. I kind of like the placement of this diner better. Maybe we'll end up filling some of this in with some more footpaths and, and turning this into a park instead of just a cut through. But we do have pedestrian. Uh, traffic, right? We got plenty of people walking around for there we go, our ferries. A couple things I should point out, and and I forgot to do this in the last episode. So if we go over to ferries or shipping, um, these roads are two-way roads. These canals, they're they're two-way traffic. So if you do um, uh, routes here, the ships are going to go up one side and then come back the other. Um, the reason that I mention that is is twofold. One, because sometimes I, I forget that when I'm first laying these out and I end up doing stuff like this. This uh, this redundant route, right? Because I was thinking like, oh, I need to give the ships a way to link back to that road. But they already have a way to link back to that road. They, they turn right around the station. And someone had mentioned doing clockwise and counterclockwise routes. Um, but technically the ships are doing that already by traveling back and forth along these paths on this route. Um, so if you wanted more, you could... Let me see. Uh, transport... Nope. Transport details. Go over to our shipping. And we could modify the vehicle count. So essentially we could, you know, budget this up to have a ton more vehicles on the line. In fact, I, I might have spawned a bunch at the depot right there. It looks like he didn't have time to kick in, which is good. Um, so that's how you can get more of the ferries on that line. But unlike the subways, well, I guess that's not true. So if you're doing a loop on a subway, you'd want to do one each way. Um, but when you're thinking about subway lines, and less of the loops, when this blue line heads out, and hits this hub station and heads back, it takes the other tunnel on the way back. So if you want more trains, more blimps, more whatever, you can go into the transport routes and modify the vehicle count modifier. Um, but just keep in mind that, you know, setting a clockwise route, a counterclockwise route doesn't really work on the, the ferries, at least not in, in this particular uh, idea. If you had a loop where it was going all the way around and it was just doing circles, then doing one way and the other way does make sense. But when you have a line, you don't really have the, the, the clockwise, counterclockwise need there 
because they're going to go on that other side of the row on the way back. So hopefully that clarifies any confusion. I get that comment a lot. And yes, if you're doing loops clockwise, counterclockwise, but you only want to do one line if you're doing a line. So hopefully that's clear. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, man, do we have a lot of movie theaters over here? I love that model. But we don't need uh, we don't need that many cinemas back to back. Uh, let's kind of keep one. Oh, man, we got a bunch over here, too. So, yeah, this is one thing we'll want to come back in and and change, uh, change and delete some of those extra models. All right, so sorry for whipping the camera all around. What are we working on today? Did I already forget? I added this little pocket of industry over here. And it seems to be doing all right. Um, industry was one of the bigger demands. I ended up redoing a lot of this in office, and I'm trying to get it like a lot of the uniques and... Uh, I almost plop more of this down. So all these uniques over here, all the ones that you see off, are not in their final resting places. This is on, but not in its final resting place. Same with this. This has been problematic at best, the recycling plant. I had to turn on all my old recycling plants and even add more because it was getting very confused about who was supposed to pick up the garbage. Um, but yeah, the thing over here is that this is kind of, this is non-high rise band, this beach district. And we'll let stuff kind of grow up as best it can. Uh, info views, building levels. Those, those are all the way leveled up. I feel like those should be taller. I don't know. I'll look at that. But we're, but, we're, but I started knocking a lot of this back. Uh, because there was a ton of commercial uh, and there is a, a demand and the need for it now, but I'm kind of rethinking some of my my zoning and all the commercial businesses kind of along the main drags were causing a ton of truck traffic. So they need goods delivered and uh, unfortunately by having them kind of on the main drag, it was not allowing me to manage my traffic as best I could. So you'll notice that like a lot of these are functioning much better now in general. There's no terrible backups. This is a backup because it's a, because it's a clover leaf. It's only so efficient at, uh, at processing traffic. But even the stuff that's kind of heavy, that, that one's actually something we're gonna need to work on. Um, it seems to help it a little bit if we do Something like that, and with the lane pinching, let me show you. Where did I do the lane pinching most recently? So that can help out a little bit. What do we got going on here? So see, this is game day. <laughs> so when there's a game going on, uh, I haven't put any metro access over here. So that will reduce this traffic quite a bit, I'm sure. Uh, metro 2.0 for for this city is coming at some point. Uh, a couple things complaining about power here, just some some parks and stuff. Uh, but that I think kind of gets you up, caught up to speed. It, yeah, I'm gonna gut pieces of the town and and kind of show you rebuilds or show you, um, in some cases where it's just stripping streets out. Kind of how we'll we'll turn this into uh, into a more pleasant visual experience, I guess you could say. So if we break out our trees again, I've been using the alders on this one. Strength all the way up. We'll fill this area in with a lot of alders. That actually did a pretty good job. And now, so things aren't one, just one color, and two, the similar size. We'll try and fill in a lot of that space. We'll go delete those extra ones on the beach after. But that'll give it some color and a little bit of pop. And then for a different type of tree, maybe we can mix in some oak, which should have a little bit lighter color than the alders. Now it's not good about the camera moving and zipping in and out, but if we were to come down here, you know, and kind of get a look now. And apologies that, you know, we play with day night cycle turned off and on Xbox that means it's just dead noon, flat light. It's not always the best to look at. Um, maybe, maybe for today's episode, maybe it's time to break out of that. So where is it? It's got to be on gameplay, right? Use day-night cycle. So let's let it play at three times speed. And let's actually see 
Grand Lakes at night, I think for the first time. I don't think I've turned the day night cycle off yet. So it's still, you know, it's still all over the place, but you know, we're tightening up bit by bit. You know, if we look at these things in isolation, like, I don't know, it's, it, it's a little boxy, but it's an industry, right? And I think we should round these fences out more towards the edge of the property. We might be able to get a couple more processing buildings in there. So what if we stop this road at the mall right there? And what if we rounded this fence out the other way? That would make sense because then we can get a a building or two more in there for sure i think so we could this one lines up on the the side road there so i think that that's the reason for extending that side road but we could definitely get a couple more things in there let's see if i remember what uh what fence it was and where is that uh it's going to be the ore industry fence. Yeah, that's the one. So instead of this curving here, actually, let's leave that curve for now. I'll show you what I'm what I'm thinking about over here. And sorry, there's no no specific purpose in today's episode, but uh, I wanted to get some recording done. And I sometimes I just want to build something new and other times I want to close out topics and talk about things before I forget about them. So this is not a not a bad little step we can do. So I don't think I'm going to be able to do the complete angle that I want here. Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Come on fence, come on fence. Get out of there. All right, so we'll bring this down. Actually, it will let me do that curve, won't it? So we can do something like that for that fence on the edge of the property. And this is kind of like a, almost like a metal barricade fence. There's other there's other fences that have, you know, a different aesthetic appeal. That's good for a city park or a, you know, property, but something like Tegrity Farms, we want people to stay out of, then uh, we want that solid wall fence, I, I think. Um, while we're in there, and just because this looks a little lumpy right here, I don't know there's much we can do about it because that building's already plopped down. But at least this next building that we pop down shouldn't be lumpy or not too bad. So what can we get in here? Let's let's see what we need from a leveling standpoint. So we need a lot of workers. And in fact, that might in part be hurting because of our um, residential demand and the fact that we moved a bunch of people out. But let's see what we can get in here. So this is forestry. I don't think we can get something like... So we've got two engineered wood plants up there. Would be kind of cool if we had another way to make paper, but that isn't unlocked yet, the pulp mill. So we could, we've got the two sawmills working on timber, the two wood plants working on timber, and these two paper mills. Jeez, I don't know what I can fit in there, not too much. So we could move maybe a storage yard and the HQ to make room for a toll booth, which I was going to have in here kind of acting as a security checkpoint. Let's do that. Let, let's do something aesthetic today. So let's move this first, the forestry main building. So if we put that about there, or on that side. So let's extend the zone and do the same thing we did with the fence before. Man, trying to delete that fence is tough from on top. Um, so back over here. Fences or freeform is fine. So let's do that and see if uh, our, our HQ fits. Our main forestry building. Oh, it's not going to fit, is it? Okay, we'll... Can we move this out? Can we get that in there? Not without adjusting the fence. Oh, so we got to come out a little bit further with the fence. That's too bad. 
but we can make that work. I don't know why I did that. I, I kind of want it right on top of the other one where possible. Oh, hey, okay, never, never mind that for now. I didn't even notice. I'm the worst. So what is uh, what does our city look like at night? And specifically, what do little areas like our uh, our nightlife look like? These have a, a nice light along them. So if we do footpaths, it can it can really kind of illuminate an area and, and give it some some depth. Where you know things that don't have light, like look at the background over there. Uh, let's let me show you what I'm talking about. I turned auto save on, by the way. You may have noticed that pop up in the corner uh, because I've been burned a lot with crashes lately. So here, I'm just going to do a couple, a little zigzag over there just to prove a point, right? You get that, you get that depth. You can put very small little details like that in the background and it gives it a little bit of life, a little bit of depth that, uh, that can make it, I think, feel much more lived in, much more natural. You have little neighborhoods up here, a couple little houses. Um, you know, you can do stuff like that, like isolated footpaths, and it won't complain about not having city services or, you know, a dead end. So you could do little things like that, just kind of off on the edge of your map to give it that feel of something happening way off there in the distance. As long as it's close enough for the lights to animate, then, then it becomes part of your town. So today was, again, kind of just to get caught up. Uh, I didn't have any major projects for today, but wanted to give you a little bit of behind the scenes on, on what's been happening. It's been um, tough with the schedule lately, so um, appreciate everybody uh, bearing with me these two weeks with uh, a little bit lighter content, especially on the Fridays. But uh, we'll get back to it at the beginning of March, but next week's totally going to be worth it. Or at least I think it is. I, I hope it will be. I'm going to bring you some, some different content and some fun vlogs, some interviews from the PAX showroom floor. And uh, I'll be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday next week. So stay tuned for what's on that. Uh, let's play next Monday, Rockdale next Wednesday. And then I don't know what's going on the rest of the week. So stay tuned for that. And then uh, beginning of March, we'll get started back on the regular uploads of Mondays and Fridays for sure on the Let's Plays and uh, try and get a little bit more uh, in depth into uh, each of the areas as we tweak them. So I'll, hopefully we're done with the behind the scenes changes, but also hopefully we're done with all the crashes and stuff I've been dealing with. It's been making recording and, and getting this footage and putting it together in a, a good way, kind of a, a pain, but uh, ultimately it's worth it if you found it entertaining, informative or educational. I hope that you did. And if you did, likes, comments and shares all help the channel a lot and are greatly appreciated. If you're new here, subscribe for more and consider hitting the bell to get updates on this and other series. Follow me on Twitter and join the Discord if you want to get involved in the discussion. If you'd like to support the channel, there's links to that and all those other things in the description down below. I've got to get rid of those uh, those statues. Um, so enjoy uh, a little bit of a flyby of some of Grand Lakes in its current form. And I say that as we swing by a massive traffic jam. We're not done, right? This is not a, uh, a cinematic episode, but just a little cinematic look at the end of today's episode at uh, Grand Lake so far. So we'll let the random cinematic camera uh, play us out. But uh, again, hopefully you enjoyed. Stay tuned. Check back regular for more City Skylines and other fun stuff coming to the channel soon. Until the next one, though, this is Move the Mouse signing off.